In this video, we're going to cover how to answer net charge amino acid questions. This is a specific subset of amino acid questions. And since amino acids are so high yield for the MCAT, we really want to make sure that we're getting all these different types of questions correct. With this in mind, let's go ahead and look at our framework. And I like to use the mnemonic DIRK when I'm dealing with charged questions. Now, why DIRK? Because this represents our four charged amino acids. Our first two here are going to be our negative amino acids, D and E, or aspartate and glutamate. And our two positive amino acids are coming next. And those are going to be arginine and lysine. And the way that I remember this is kind of cheesy, but it's a little bit of a story where, uh, you know, DIRKs, they're negative people. They're going to suck the positivity out of things. So if DIRK is like a jerk, then the negative comes first because they're a negative person, they suck the positivity out of things, the positive come last. So that's how you can remember that D and E are your negative amino acids and R and K are your positive amino acids. So that's all great, but how do we actually solve these net charge questions? Well, there are three major steps. So our first step here is going to be rewrite. And when I talk about rewriting, we're going to be rewriting a particular peptide sequence with only the DERK amino acids listed. After we've rewritten, we're going to go ahead and cancel. And that's going to be canceling positive and negative amino acids with one another. And then lastly, we're going to go ahead and count. Because if we've canceled, all we'll have left is one type of charged amino acid. We're either going to have all negative, all positive, or we won't have any left. Then we can just go ahead and count, and that will give us our net charge for that overall peptide sequence. So let's go ahead and dive into the first sort of net charge question. This is the one that just asks straight up for the net charge. And we're going to use that same Dirk amino acid mnemonic that we were seeing before, as well as those three steps. So let's dive right in. So here's our first peptide sequence. It's K-L-E-I-A-R-K. -E so if, remember, our first step here is going to be to rewrite, and we only rewrite the Dirk amino acids. So we'll include K. We'll ignore L. We'll include E. Ignore I. Ignore A. Include R. And include K. Now that we have this rewritten, we're going to go ahead and cancel. And this is where we're going to cancel positive and negative amino acids with one another. So for example, if we had a D, we could cancel an R. Or if we had an E, we could cancel a K or any combination of those particular two. So here we have an E, and we're going to go ahead and cancel out this first K. That leaves us with two positively charged amino acids last. And this is where we get to our count step. So since we have two positive amino acids, the overall net charge of this particular sequence is plus two. Now, at this point in time, you might be wondering, well, what about the termini? Well, the termini in this instance would one would be the N-terminus, which would have a positive charge, and another would have a negative charge. Well, those are just going to cancel. And all of this is assuming, which is most often the case, that we're at or near around a pH of 7 or a physiological pH, which is a little bit higher, 7.3. We'll talk about an exception to that a little bit later, but let's look at some more examples of how this will work so you can get the concept down. So here's our next one. And again, we're starting with our rewrite step. So this is S-G-E-F-I-K. So S-G, we skip. E is our first DERK amino acid that we count. F isn't included, neither is I, so then we'll go ahead and include K. Now we're going to go ahead and cancel. So between these two, we can cancel the E with the K. And here we aren't left with anything. Since we don't have any amino acids left, the overall net charge of this particular sequence is going to be zero. Let's look at one more example just to drive this idea home. All right, here's our last one. And again, we're going to start with the exact same setup. We're going to go ahead and rewrite this, ignoring anything but our DERK. P is ignored, we'll include E. We ignore the second P, include the K, the R, ignore the A, the F, and the L. So now we have our DERK amino acids written out. We're going to go ahead and make some cancellations. So here, we'll go ahead and cancel the E, and we'll cancel the R. We could have chosen the K, but I just want to make the point that you can do E to K or E to R. It's not specific. So now we're just going to go ahead and count. We have one amino acid left. That one amino acid is a positively charged amino acid. So our overall charge of this particular sequence will be plus one. So hopefully this makes sense and really simplifies this process. Now let's talk about one exception. And that exception is histidine. So what about histidine? Why is it included in our mnemonic of DERK? Well, if you look at resources on the internet or your MCAT books, often you're going to see histidine is grouped in the basic amino acids. And that's true. And it can be positively charged. But its pKa is actually 6. And what does this mean? Well, the pKa of 6 is telling us where this is going to act like an acid and where it's going to act like a base. And so specifically, if we write this out, anything that is less than 6 in terms of a pH, 
here, it's going to act as a base. And when it acts as a base, this is where it'll actually gain that positive charge. However, if the pH is greater than six, which is often the case with a lot of these questions, then it's essentially going to deprotonate or act as an acid. And this is when it becomes neutral. So we can see that we really shouldn't include histidine in our Dirk mnemonic because for the most part, we're going to be dealing with physiological pH or at least pHs above six. And so therefore, it doesn't make sense. But let's look at an example where we might need to actually care about histidine. And this is anytime we are below a pH of six and how this is going to change the net charge of a particular protein. So you don't get tripped up on a question that maybe has a slightly irregular pH. So to begin, let's look at the amino acid peptide sequence that we have over here. And we'll look at it at a pH of seven and we will just follow our normal steps. And so that's just rewriting our dark amino acids. So we skip H, we skip A, and then we'll just write K and E for this one here. And again, we'll go ahead and cancel. And both of these will cancel out with one another. So the K will cancel out with the E. And so therefore, this would have a net charge of zero. Well, now let's go ahead and think about this at pH 5. If we're below that pH of 6, which is below the pKa of histidine, then we need to include histidine as one of those charged amino acids. And so it should end up in our sequence. So in this case here, we're not actually going to ignore that, height, that histidine, and we're going to include it. So H, we still ignore A, K. And, e. and now we can go ahead and cancel. We'll cancel the positive with a negative. And now here we can see that we're left with one positive amino acid. And therefore, the overall peptide sequence at pH of 5 for this particular peptide is plus 1. So we can see that histidine below that pH of 6 is going to change the net charge. I would say 95% of the time, maybe even more, on the AMC questions, you're probably going to be asked around physiological pH or above it. So Dirk is going to be the one that you want to default to if you're a little bit confused. But just keep this in mind since there is this one exception and there is a possibility of actually getting asked this question on the MCAT. Okay, so we've looked at net charge questions, which is asking us to find the net charge. Let's go ahead and look at a slightly different question, which is a change in net charge. These are usually going to involve mutations. So we're going to start off by discussing the mutation notation that you're very likely to see on the MCAT. So when you see mutation notation, you're very likely going to see something like this, where you're going to have these different sequences, and you're going to see an amino acid, such as this first one here, which is A, and then it's going to give you a number in the middle, and then it will be followed by another amino acid, K. And the way that this works is A is referring to the old amino acid, and then the number is referring to its position. And then lastly, that last letter or last amino acid is telling you what the new or the mutated version is. So for example, if we were to put this first one in plain English, the way that this would be written or, or said would be alanine at the 69th position has been mutated to lysine. Now, how do we tackle these particular questions? Well, we're going to do a lot of the same things that we saw previously in terms of solving using that Dirk method and then those three steps, except here we're going to do this twice. We're going to do it once for the old amino acid and we're going to do, or for the peptide, and we're going to do it a second time for the new. And we want to go ahead and just separate this out. And this will make a lot more sense as we start to work through it. So let's jump right in. So starting with this, we can go ahead and look at all of these blue highlighted ones, which were the old peptide or the old amino acids in these positions. So alanine we skip, D we keep. Now, since this is just D and we're going to skip the Y, well, we don't have any cancellation to do. So let's go ahead and move on. And now we'll move on to any of the yellow highlighted amino acids, which are in the new one. So we'll include K. We'll include the second K. We will skip T because it's not one of those Dirk amino acids. And again, this is assuming that it's at that kind of physiological pH. And now we have to choose, um, or now we now we would do our cancellations. There's no cancellations to do here. So we're just going to go ahead and count. So in this first one here, we have one, and that is minus one. And then in the second one, we have two, and those are both positive, so it's plus two. In order to figure out the change here, we're just going to go ahead and think on a number line, how many positions do we have to move? So from minus one to zero is one, from zero to one is one, and then from zero to two is one. So that's three overall. So this is a plus three change in net charge. Let's look at another example so that you can see a little bit of repetition just so you get this idea down. All right, again, we're going to go ahead and jump right in and start with that sort of first step of rewriting. And again, I'm going to just highlight these so we're really clear on what it is that we're rewriting. So for this blue one or these original here, we have a uh, F and an S. We skip both of those. So we'll just put a little placeholder and we can go ahead and just count that since there's nothing there. This is going to have a net charge of 
zero to begin. And now we can go ahead and look at the yellow highlighted ones, which is going to be our new sequence. And both of these are DERK amino acids. So we'll include both D and E. And we don't have any cancellations to do. We can simply count. That's going to be minus two. We'll now go ahead and think about the difference between these two. And this is a minus two change. So the net change in peptide sequence when we have these particular mutations would be minus two. Let's look at one last example, and then we'll kind of wrap up from there. All right, here's our last sequence. Let's begin with our new one first. So we skip the M, we skip the T. We'll go ahead and write the K. Now let's look at our new sequence. We'll skip the V. We'll include the R. We'll skip the Y. So this will just be R. We'll go ahead and count both of these up. So this K is plus 1. The R is also plus 1. There is no difference between these two. And therefore, the net change in this particular sequence will be 0. So let's go ahead and wrap up from here and figure out exactly what we've learned so far. So we learned about DERK, and that's for physiological pH, and we also learned about the histidine exception, which is going to be for pHs below 6. And then we have our three steps for solving these net charge type of questions. First, we're going to rewrite. Second, we're going to cancel. Third, we count, and that should be our answer. If we're dealing with the standard net charge of a particular peptide sequence, you're done there. If, on the other hand, you're looking for the change in net charge, you basically just do those three steps two times, once for the old sequence, which is going to be the first letter that's listed before the number, and another time for the letter that's listed after that for the new sequence. Then you'll just go ahead and compare those two, thinking about it on a number line and how that difference, and that will give you the change in net charge. If you like this video and found it helpful, make sure to subscribe for more helpful MCAT tips and share it with anybody else who might be taking the MCAT.